Hello everyone, welcome to IAS Baba's 60 days rapid revision series for PLIMS 2022. This is day 23 and the topic we have is science and tech, nanotechnology and the robotics. So here, firstly we go through the properties of nanoparticles. So we have physical property that means the tensile strength. So it is very hard to break a nanoparticle. So here a nanoparticle say graphene is 200 times harder than steel. And then the magnetic properties. So the magnetic property means they have a very high magnetic conductivity. So again, they can be used as a good magnets also. And then optical properties. So for example, we take gold nanoparticles. So around these, we will be having so many free electrons. And if I pass a radiation through this, so all these uh, electrons, they vibrate. So they will also emit the radiations so that we can use this gold nanoparticle as the amplifier of this one. So one radiation, so that will give rise to so many radiations and also if I attach any other element to this gold nanoparticle, so the vibrations will alter accordingly. So by that I can also detect the metal I have attached to here. So as a spectroscope, that means a spectroscope will detect, so which is the metal by identifying the electromagnetic rays that are passing through it. So here also we can have a spectroscope like this by using gold nanoparticle then thermal properties so the gold nanoparticles or any other nanoparticles so they have a very high thermal properties that means they can withhold the heat so much and that is why they are used as the heat sinks okay say for example if you have a nanoparticle made heat sink in a building so that will act as a fireproof so they will withhold and withstand the heat then catalytic activity so nanoparticles they have so much of surface area being exposed so so much of surface area means the chemical reaction will be 100 times more so that is why they can also act as catalysts and then electrical properties so this comes with the magnetic properties more the electrical property magnetic property will also be huge then semiconductors so here the nano semiconductors but obvious they can uh, fit into the even minute motherboards so that means we can reduce the size of the electronic gadgets if we have the semiconductors that are made up of nanotechnology and then the superconductors so we know that the nanoparticles they have a uh, very high electric and magnetic conductivity so thereby we can also manufacture superconductors so these are some of the properties okay and then come to next the synthesis of nanoparticles now we begin with the copper sulfate so this copper sulfate is taken as electrolyte and two electrodes are attached here so this copper sulfate in the liquid form it will get converted into cu plus and so4 minus ions and this cu plus so they will come and get deposited around this cathode like this so indirectly i got the Cu plus nanoparticles. So likewise, if you use the auric sulfate, so you will get gold nanoparticles here. So likewise, with the help of electrolysis, that is why it is called the electrosynthesis. And then come to next, the chemosynthesis. So here in chemosynthesis, again the CuSO4 solution is used and the iron nail is used. So here, what happens is that the copper ions, so they get deposited on this and the ferrous sulphate solution is being created. So the same way, instead of copper sulphate, if you use the auric sulphate, you will get the gold nanoparticles deposited on the iron nailings here. And then come to next, the biosynthesis. So biosynthesis is also easier. Say for example, in the gold medium, so you put some bacteria. So bacteria, they will find these gold minute nutrients and they will absorb them because the gold is a micronutrient for them and now once they absorb, they will feel that they have absorbed in excess. So now they start secreting out. So once they start secreting out, so they will secrete through the small pores whichever are present outside their body. So once they are passing it through small pores, so but obvious we get the gold nanoparticles because the pores of the bacteria, they are in nanoscale. So these are the types of synthesis of the nanoparticles. Then come to next, the application of graphene. So graphene is one of the important nanoparticle. And here we know that graphene is a single most layer of the carbon and it is made up of a single layer of hexagonal rings. And here graphene materials can find uses in aerospace, building materials and mobile devices and many other applications. So this is mainly because of its tensile strength. And then as graphene is also strong and light, it means that it is a great material for making heat dissipation films. So heat sinks. So in electronic gadgets, if you have these films, so they will absorb and hold more heat. Then this could be useful in both micro and macro electronics. So 
we can use it as a best conductor so as a conductor it is used in both electricals and electronics then huawei's latest smartphone for example have adopted graphene based thermal films so this is one example for the heat sinks then coming to next graphene may enable batteries and super capacitors so that means we can also use this graphene to store more and more electrical energy also not only the heat electrical energy can also be stored so now when electrical energy is stored so they become the best materials for the capacitors and the batteries so the battery technology and super capacitors so that can be produced with the help of graphene then other additional applications are the anti corrosion coatings and paints so here you can use the nanoparticles as the thin coatings which can protect the object for which we are coating that then efficient and precise sensors so we know that the nanoparticles they have a very much surface area being exposed so so much surface area means so they can sense various chemicals with more precision then flexible displays so when we are having a display made up of a graphene so that means it will not only be thin but will also be flexible and then efficient solar panels so but obvious because of increased exposure and surface area so we can absorb more sunlight with the help of this graphene and then the faster dna sequencing so here with the help of these graphene made tools small small nano tools we can make sure that the fast dna editing can also be done so small small laboratorial operations can also be performed and then drug delivery and other things so we know that graphene gold nanoparticles they can also be used for the drug delivery and then come to next the uses of carbon nanotubes friends we know that carbon nanotube is nothing but the pipe made up of the graphene so here we can see various pipes made and it can also be multiple walled so we can have multiple rings within a ring so thereby making it a carbon nano rod or carbon nano tube so whatever we want we can produce from this here and the uses so the breast cancer tumor destruction so it is like we can also use to burst the tumors so here it is like one antibody will be attached to, to the carbon nano tube and this carbon nano tube so that will flow throughout the body and it will enter the blood and as and when it enters the blood so it will get targeted towards the tumor and there it will go and perform its actions then windmill blades friends we know that the graphene is very tough and we can also use these to cover the windmills the windmills they will not only be stronger but also they can also store more charges so this stored charges so that can also be harnessed in the form of electrostatic energy then filtration so whenever we are going for filtering any water or others so we can use candles made up of carbon nanotubes so candles means those we use in our ro's then aqua guards and others then carbon nanotubes so they are also used as nano cylinders so instead of using one big cylinder we can also use so many carbon nanotubes inside this and thereby we can store the gases more efficiently and then the aircraft stress reduction so if we make the aircraft bodies with these carbon nanotubes so they are not only lightweight but they can also withhold more heat and apart from that so they can also withhold more stresses so say for example some wear and tear parts will be there so there if we use these carbon nanotubes so they will work more efficiently then come to next the nano lubricants so nanotechnology can also be used as lubricants say for example the small small carbon particles or the gold nanoparticles so they can be used as rollers or even the ball bearings so even ball bearings are also good lubricants and then we have mending effect that means if there is any groove so here the groove is so small that we cannot fill anything into that so here we can fill them with the nanoparticles and then we have the protective filming say for example if any surface is very rough or if any surface is hard enough so it cannot roll over another so we can use a smooth nano particles so that can be used as coating and then we can rub each other and we can also have polishing so if we polish any surface with the nano particles so very smooth polishing will come and that polishing will also be in the nano scale so again it can also help in lubrication then come to next the nano electronics so here nano electronics refers to the use of nano technology in electronic components so some of these include semiconductors and nano wires so we know that nano wires so the gold nano particles are the graphene they are good conductors of electricity so here apart from that how will you prepare a semiconductor so semiconductor it is very easy so now we will prepare a pnp transistor and see how we can prepare a transistor here say for example we have the gold nano particles so these gold nano particles will be having electrons all over so within outside and also inside so they have electrons so now bring and attach one manganese oxide 
particle here. So this manganese oxide that will be having so many m1 plus ions. So this positive charge will get accumulated here and now the electrons will be pushed to the other side. So now as and when the electrons are pushed to the other side. So here the electrons inside so they will come and they will lie very nearer to this positive charge. And now bring one more manganese oxide here. So here also the positive charge comes. So that means P n and p so that means positive charge then the negative charge and positive charge so p doping n doping and p doping so we got a p and p transistor here so likewise we can make a transistor and apart from that we can also make the field effect transistors that is mosfet fets mosfets j fets so anything can be made with the help of the nanotechnology so now the electronics industry became a revolution and we can make very small small electronic gadgets without any complications and without spending too much of money. Then come to next the artificial intelligence so and its use in the field of medicine. So AI this is used in disease detection and diagnosis. Say for example if you use artificial intelligence and if you train it by making it to be exposed to the cancerous tumors. So now if we keep a normal cell and a cancerous cell it will exactly detect which is the cancerous cell. So it will learn on its own by observing the things. Then the AI in medical imaging say for example the neural networks so it can give you the best images say for example it will get to know in which angle the image will be the best so that angle will be provided to you and it will be provided to the doctors during operations also and then clinical trial efficacy so whenever we are going with the clinical trials for any drug so for that drug also, so we can use artificial intelligence. Say for example, we will be testing hundreds of chemicals in various permutations and combinations and this artificial intelligence. So that will give you various combinations and that will uh, increase the speed of the process and thereby without so much of delay, we can come up with these clinical trials and then accelerated drug development. So again, so whenever we are going for these clinical trials, so the drug development will be accelerated. So these are some of the things in the field of medicines and then come to next the artificial intelligence robots versus normal robots. So what is the difference between an AI robot and a normal robot? Friends, the only difference is that this normal robot, it requires continuous signaling and command to function. So, but artificial intelligence, so it requires very minimum command. So with minimum command and with its own thinking capacity, so these can work. So here artificial intelligent robots are a combination of AI and robotics. So that is a software that is the brain is embedded into this robotic system. So here we have some of the examples of AI robots that is artificial intelligence robots. So compare this with the any other robot which requires the continuous command to do even the simple tasks. Say here we have the starship robot. So that can carry any items, any consumer items within a 4 mile or 6 kilometer radius and it can navigate itself in the streets and it can also deliver the packages. So as a delivery boy, this robot can be used. And then pepper, so it is a humanoid robot and it is designed to interact with the people and to assist them, share the information with them and help the customers to find their products in the retail stores. So this is the pepper we are seeing here. And then Nimbo, Nimbo is a robot security. So it is a security guard robot and it has various security applications. So it might be having the night vision technologies so that it can see in the night very precisely. So such things. Then come to next, Penny. So it is a bowling spin shaped food service robot. So here we can see it is serving the food. So it can take the food from kitchen and it can serve to the customers and it can bring back the plates that are being used. So these are some of the artificially intelligent robots that are in vogue in the market. Then come to next different kinds of robots. So in the robotics we have various kinds. For example, when question comes, so the application of robots will come. So on that perspective we discuss here. So first is the disaster robots. So here these robots perform dangerous jobs like searching for survivors in the aftermath of an emergency. Say for example, if you have a snake shaped robot or the snake boards, so they can enter into the earthquake debris and they can give us a visual information that is who is buried under. So whether they are alive or dead, so such informations, then drones. So friends, all drones, so they are the robots themselves. So they can move, they can manipulate, they can spray the pesticides. So all those, we got a question on drones in 2020 prelims. Then education, so we can have a robotic teacher. So like we have Emmys, it is a robotic teacher. It will teach like any normal human being. Then entertainment, so these robots, they are specialized to give emotions or to give some heroic macho man like 
uh, effects. So all these will give excessive entertainment to the people and we can also think of the chat boards that means for older people they can be a good company for them to rid of the loneliness. Then the exoskeleton say for example these are the ones which will make the paralyzed person to walk. So if they wear these exoskeletons so that will give the muscular strength for them to walk again. And then the humanoids so they are the humanoid shaped robot or the human shaped robots and then industrial applications so here we have a simple manipulator arm so any arm which will fix the things which will cut the things or which will move the things so anything so here the unimate so unimate is the company and it is the first robot so which is a manipulator robot so it is the beginning of these robots and now the robotics is a revolution then in the medical so here we have the da vinci surgical robot so it can uh, perform surgical operations and we can also think of the bionic prosthesis so bionic prosthesis means so these robots they can act as a artificial arm artificial leg artificial heart sometimes so that can also be possible then military and security so here military robots so they include ground systems like endeavor robots so endeavor robot means so they can uh, go down the tunnel and they can go down the fence and they can fight the enemies so they can survive in the harsh environment and fight the enemies so such are important for India. So whenever we are sending soldiers to the Leh, Ladakh, Tibet and other high places. And then come to next, the government initiative to promote artificial intelligence and robotics. So first is the artificial intelligence. So Niti Aayog's National Strategy for Artificial Intelligence 2018. So that came up and that was based on the Kamakoti Committee. So what was the recommendations of Kamakoti Committee? So that is to set up a digital data bank and the marketplaces and exchanges to ensure availability of cross industry information friends for artificial intelligence so it is one thing is the data that is required and the second is the high calculation speed say for example the artificial intelligence works with the probability and if you do the daily chores so by seeing your daily chores the robot will learn what you are going to do next or what you are going to do in the future so that is why the data collection is the first step for this artificial intelligence then setting up a national artificial intelligence mission so one mission has to be set up and then coming to next the national strategy for artificial intelligence 2015 to 20 so within this so we are having some funding some encouragement for research and development and others for artificial intelligence and then the microsoft and the indian startup that is for us health has developed a portable device named trinetra so trinetra means so it is a artificially intelligent robot that can screen for the common eye problems as well as complicated conditions like diabetic retinopathy so diabetic retinopathy means due to diabetes our retina will weaken so this trinetra it can identify and diagnose such defects then come to next the smart cities and infrastructure so even in the smart cities we have artificial intelligence so here the service delivery crowd management cyber security public safety water waste management so all these are included then bandicoot robots have been developed for sewerage cleaning and to put an end to manual scavenging so this is a great achievement and then the smart mobility and transportation so artificial intelligence based traffic management system and the system is also embedded with the cctv cameras and the sensors and others okay so these are the latest ones and then come to next the robotics in 2014 a laboratory of drdo so that set up the center for artificial intelligence and robotics so sair so remember this and then the indo us science and technology forum launched us india artificial intelligence initiative under this responsible artificial intelligence for youth was launched for the government schools and then niti aayog started a program called national programming on artificial intelligence to guide the research and development in this rising technology and then all india council for robotics and automation so that has announced the launch of a new initiative that is the tech startup program so here it is like for any tech startups who are coming up with robotics and artificial intelligence so they are given encouragements and then the technoxian so it is an edutech expo organized by icra so icra that organized an expo on this edutech that means to educate the people on artificial intelligence and robotics. So Expo means a Mela like thing. Then several private ventures collaborated with ICRA to create, promote 
and sustain technology based innovation center in india so we have an innovation center also in india so all these things are worth remembering then come to next inspiration four so entrepreneur elon musk's spacex recently announced that inspiration four its first all civilian non governmental space flight so this is a space flight and all civilian and it will take a group of four private citizens into the space for 3 days and the mission involves circling the earth for 3 days and then splashing down into the atlantic ocean so it is not a soft reentry it will splash into the ocean then inspiration 4 will orbit the earth at 575 km higher than the international space station and also the hubble space telescope and then this will be the farthest distance traveled by a crewed mission since 2009 when astronauts last went to repair hubble so this is going past the hubble then the journey will present an opportunity for collecting large amounts of health data and will aid in planning future crewed space missions so health data market as important then this will also help in assessing behavioral and cognitive changes over the journey so various uses are there so here remember the facts and also the name inspiration for so what does this provide for then come to next milky sea effect so here new satellite technology that is day or night brand so is being used by scientists to find glow in the dark milky sea of marine lore so marine lore is a sea so here we have the picture how this milky sea effect comes into picture so it refers to an unusual marine phenomenon in the ocean in which a large amount of sea water appears to glow brightly at night so this is how it is being glowing and then also called as marine the milky sea is caused by bioluminescent bacteria so by the bioluminescent bacteria it is happening and that live throughout the water column from the surface to the floor so these bacteria they live from top to bottom in all the layers and then some point out that marine is typically caused by noctilucus scintillans that is popularly known as sea sparkle then it is a dinoflagellate that glows when disturbed so dinoflagellate means it is having flagellas and it glows only when it is disturbed then such glow is visible from the satellites also so from the satellite we are imaging this but obvious then self driving cars so here self driving or the driverless or robotic cars use artificial intelligence so both robotics and ai are being used here and then they also have computing power to navigate so self navigation then they are specialized in sensing their own environment and making decisions in the real time to avert mishaps and then they do this using a range of sensors cameras on all sides as well as predetermined digital maps and real time inputs about traffic obstacles okay so here all these accessories are required to build a driverless car or the self driving car then the first experimental self driving car started in 1984 so now most of the companies they are competing each other to come up with a self driving car then self driving cars however have been caught in multiple collisions and the technology works subject to other factors such as errors made by humans in other cars so accident need not happen by our own mistakes even from other mistakes it can happen then come to next the airavat so now a report titled airavat that is establishing an artificial intelligence specific cloud computing infrastructure for india so that was released so under this the government stated that the government has an ambitious plan of setting up airavat that is artificial intelligence research analytics and knowledge assimilation platform so this is a platform to enhance our knowledge regarding artificial intelligence so here a cloud platform for big data analytics and advanced ai then the infrastructure will be capable of supercomputing and development of the healthcare and agriculture sector and weather forecasting and financial inclusion so everything can happen then government will also develop a artificial intelligence specific computing infrastructure to assist the computing needs of the centers of research excellence and the innovation hubs and international center for transformational ai so here for all these computing purposes so government is going to set up an artificial intelligence so here remember the report and the airavat so this is a platform and then it is going to set up the critical infrastructure required for the artificial intelligence so these two are more important then come to next diabetes friends nowadays every day we find various articles for this diabetes and it has become a menace now so here we have two types of diabetes that is diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus so what is diabetes mellitus so here it is the lack of insulin so the type 1 so diabetes mellitus itself is of two types 
type 1 diabetes mellitus and type 2 diabetes mellitus. So, in the type 1, pancreas fails to produce insulin in the body and this also destroys the immune system. So, here completely no insulin at all. So, that means if the patient is not administered insulin, so then there might be complications or he might die. Then type 2 diabetes. So, here produced insulin is not sufficient. So, the pancreas is producing insulin, but it is not sufficient. And here the body requirement is more and then the cells are resistant. So, that means even after production of insulin, the glucose level is not coming down inside the cells. So, these are the two reasons. And here remember pancreas has two hormones, insulin and glucagon. And it has different types of enzymes and enzymes are different from hormones. Then come to next, the main symptoms of diabetes mellitus. So, increased thirst, then weight loss, then increased urination, then hunger due to starvation of cells then fatigue, that means body pain and others, then slow healing of wounds, then yeast infections. So, the fungal infections will increase and then tingling sensation on the feet or the toes. So, for example, we will be having itching or some tickling or others. Then come to next, the diabetes insipidus. It is an abnormal situation wherein the kidneys are no longer able to control the excretion of water. So, this is not related to pancreas, it is very much related to kidney. So, when kidney will not hold water, so, so much of urination will happen. And then diabetes mellitus and diabetes insipidus are not related, but both they have the same symptoms that is the thirst and frequent urination. So, remember these two types of diabetes, then come to the last part. Friends, the basic psychology says that the strong people are always attracted by the strong people only. So, that means if we solve our own problems, so that means we are physically and mentally strong. So, now other people can approach us for their difficulties. If we are going to our parents, if we are approaching others for our difficulties, then there is no meaning in other people coming in search of us for their difficulties. So, make sure that that charity always begins from home. So, your strength, so that will be showed by your own activities in the day to day life. So, make sure that try maximum to live an independent life. Try solving your own problems and make sure that so you will come up as the strongest person in the world for that matter so that the whole world will come in search of you once the world is in trouble. So that is the ultimate moment a person can ever get in his life. So do it all the very best. Good luck friends.